Plymouth Roadrunner had a big impact on the American muscle car scene upon its release for the 1968 model year. The Pontiac GTO and other muscle cars by the 1968 model year had become too expensive for a good number of younger muscle car buyers. This is why the 1968 to 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner was so crucial. It was a no-frills American muscle car with an ultra-low base price. The Roadrunner was first introduced for the 1968 model year and was built on Chrysler's redesigned for 1968 B-body platform. Concerning aesthetics, the 1968 Roadrunner was as basic as it got. It was standard with the Plymouth Belvedere's front bench seat, Spartan dash, and very plain interior design, which included a standard rectangular speedometer. The Belvedere was Plymouth's very low-cost B-body platform car that appealed to frugal buyers, law enforcement agencies, and taxi cab companies. Many younger muscle car buyers with limited funds weren't bothered with having a Spartan interior and few options. They wanted mandatory high-performance items such as dual exhaust, a heavy-duty suspension, and a large displacement high-performance V8. The 1968-1970 to 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner delivered all these items for a bargain basement base price. As an example, the 1968 Roadrunner had a base price of only $2,896. Most 1968 model year American muscle cars had base prices over $3,000. The 1968 to 1970 Roadrunner did have fantastic exterior styling. It was Chrysler B Body's fuselage styling at its best. The same overall exterior car body lines were shared with the other Chrysler Corporation's two-door 1968-1970 B-body cars, such as the 1968-1970 Dodge Charger, which was subjectively the best-looking Charger series ever built. The Roadrunner didn't have the Charger's hidden headlamps and more upscale-looking exterior trim. The genius in the Roadrunner's exterior design was the melding together of all the following design elements, curved side body panels and side windows, a semi-fastback roofline, and a squarish front and rear design. Overall, it was a great looking car, and within a very short period of time, it would obtain legendary status. There were three different body styles offered, the two-door coupe, two-door hardtop, and two-door convertible. The convertible was only available for the 1969 and 1970 model years. The two-door coupe had a visible pillar between the front and rear side windows. The hardtop didn't have this pillar. Plymouth certainly did its research and priced the Roadrunner correctly, along with offering desired options at additional cost, such as bucket seats and even a center console. The option list had substantially increased in size by the time the 1970 model year arrived in order to expand the appeal of the Roadrunner to those buyers wanting a muscle car with more options. Also new for 1970 were standard round dash gauges. Plymouth was a marketing genius by using the Roadrunner name, which was the name of the very quick bird character in the popular cartoon series at the time called The Roadrunner Show. Plymouth made sure to adorn its Roadrunner cars with decals of the Roadrunner cartoon bird also included was a car horn which made the same beep beep sound the Roadrunner was famous for in the TV show. The real appeal of the 1968 to 1970 Roadrunner was the fantastic muscle car engines it could be equipped with. 
the base engine for all three model years was none other than Chrysler's 335 gross horsepower, 383 cubic inch big block V8. For 1969 and 1970, the Roadrunner could be equipped with the optional 390 gross horsepower 6-pack 440 cubic inch big block V8, which had three two-barrel carburetors. And for 1968 to 1970, the Roadrunner could be equipped with Chrysler's legendary 425 gross horsepower, 426 cubic inch big block Hemi V8. When the Roadrunner was equipped with either a 440 six pack or 426 Hemi, it was one of the fastest cars of the golden era. The 426 Hemi powered Roadrunner was good for 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds and mid 13 second quarter mile times. Also adding to the Roadrunner's appeal was that all of its engines were standard with a 4 speed manual transmission. A 3 speed automatic transmission was optional on all Roadrunner engines. Plymouth released a low production version of the Roadrunner for 1970 called the Superbird, which added a very tall rear wing, revised rear roof line, and a super aerodynamic front nose cone with pop-up headlights. The Superbird could be equipped with all the Roadrunner's available engines, except for the 383 V8. The 375 gross horsepower, four-barrel carburetor equipped, 440 cubic inch big block V8 replaced the 383 as the Superbird's standard engine. The sole purpose of the Superbird was to have its exterior changes be approved for NASCAR race duty, which required these changes to be offered in a production car. In the last two decades, the Superbird has reached legendary status, now commanding extremely high prices on the collector car market. The 1968 to 1970 Roadrunner was an extremely popular car with 172,423 total being produced, which included 1,920 Superbirds. The Roadrunner was one of the most well-known muscle cars of the golden era. It offered muscle car buyers the full muscle car package for a bargain basement price. It was the first generation of the Roadrunner and subjectively its best. The generation that followed had sleeker exterior styling but within a few model years had significantly lower horsepower and performance. The 1968 to 1970 Roadrunner was simplicity perfected. It didn't try to be something it wasn't. It was a true muscle car that even those with meager financial means back in the day could purchase. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. Please subscribe since your support is the reason this channel is a success. And please make sure to click on the bell icon so that you never miss a new video release.